Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel, and you're watching what I'm. I've come up with a new name of it, uh, Paul. I, you know, my channel is Lawn Care Life. I'm just calling this Lawn Care Live. Okay, I changed one letter. There this you is go. Lawn Care Live, and hopefully, uh, many of you recognize my guest today. It's none other than best-selling author Paul Jameson of his book "Cut That Grass and Make That Cash." And I, I did. Paul I forgot to. Tell, well, first, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. Now, this is the big break you've been looking for, and you finally it's come on a Monday night. I know it's past your bedtime, but you you probably uh, you you got a coffee in you or something to help you have a little energy. Yeah, I'm not even at home. I, I'm at the studio, so I I uh, this is a rare occasion for me, Jason, to be out this late. Yeah, me too, to be honest with you. Well, I'm on Central Time. That's the only reason that I can survive these things. All right, so what we do, Paul, basically is Q&A, uh, mostly for the audience, and I'll, I'll probably throw in a few of my own questions too. Um, but I, I tell you guys that are uh, watching, you can ask us anything about well, I mean, really anything. I mean, we can always decline to answer. But, uh, for, you know, lawn care related, if you want to ask me how to kill weed or ask something about lawn business or you just want to ask um, – Whatever you want to ask, just bring it on, because we got our chance to talk to Paul here. And uh, Paul, you got you got a lot going on, right? You know, with your your podcast, you, you're cranking out six episodes a week. But I mean, Monday through Friday, and then you got the Sunday service, and now you you're back on YouTube, back and better than ever. So uh, tell us, you know, give us a brief update before we start getting to the questions. Okay, super brief update. I started my lawn care business in 2011. And really grew all of that. And I'm thinking about starting a second business now um, this spring. So we shall see in, in a different region, in a different in a different part of Atlanta that's not as populated. So I've been working really hard behind the scenes of all that. And we've been documenting it on YouTube. Uh, the channel's Paul Jamison Landscaping for now. But we're, we're going to change that when we launch the new business name and all that. I just don't want someone to steal my name before <laughs> we make it all you know a, a attorneys signing the dotted lines and all that so i got you it's it's around the corner uh lord willing and then yeah we have the green industry podcast uh monday through friday we talk how to build a successful lawn care and landscaping business and then um we're you know we're cranking out six podcast episodes a week and now you know pretty much daily youtube videos so it's a lot yeah when i'm around paul he he's a hard worker he's got he's he's focused on what he's doing and he kind of patterns his life around i don't mean that like he's consumed but i mean it like he he takes care of his body like he, he exercises he tries to eat right he's and he's focused on what he's trying to do you know and i think that's the way because you know that's a lot that's a lot to do you know and now you, you're kind of piling more on top of it uh, which i'm not saying is a bad thing but you you know you that you got to be focused on what you're doing to accomplish all that yeah, and I have a tendency, and I know a lot of other small business owners, I have a tendency to bite off more than I can chew. And so that's why I've been really slow kind of moving along to start some new yeah. things and, and to do this. And I have a I have a really good nucleus of men in my life that, you know, have wisdom that that can kind of guide me to say, hey, you you know, you're you're doing too much, or you know what, I think you're onto something here. Move cautiously, but uh, I think when you have that entrepreneurial spirit, you just got to be careful because we can, you know, be juggling too much if we're not careful real fast. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you some more in a minute, Paul, but I'm going to get to the questions here because we try to make it about the audience best we can. Benji and Paul, you can see the questions right on the screen. Yes. All right. So I'm just, I'm just starting up a mowing business. I am finally uh, figured out how to price, but should I price per obstacle or just a flat free? Uh, flat fee example trees flower beds you know what they're telling about paul you get you can pull up that yard and it, and, and they oh, yeah. you know the customer they say hey hey i don't even, i don't have that much grass you know and you go out there and you're like i wish it was grass they got a tree planted ever three square feet with no you know and it's like anyway what's your advice to benji on this one yeah benji yeah. i would definitely charge more and i like to look for slopes hills that those are going to instantly be more if, if they got a big old slope or big old hill and then always check the gate uh to get in the backyard can a 48 inch 68 inch i don't know what your biggest mower is benji but will it have access to the backyard if not and you got to take a, a 30 inch or a 21 inch mower to the backyard you got to charge more for that and so it's not based on square footage it, it is based on the obstacles how easy you can get equipment in and out, parking, 
you're looking at all of that. And so um, I personally charge more. Uh, I call them PETA customers, pain in the rear end. You know, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be the individuals of pain in the rear end. It could be the property is, you know, got the obstacles. So yeah, you definitely yeah. got to pad on a little extra for those. And, and honestly, sometimes it's better just to pass if it's too much of a headache. I had one yard, Jason, that had dog poop in the backyard and the dogs would like dig holes and you'd be back there mowing and, you know, you roll your ankle and things like that. It's not worth it. I, I like plain Jane, simple properties. Yeah. And, and you're talking about starting a new lawn business in a new area, Paul. Are, are you, is that part of factored in is like the neighborhoods that are in that area. So like, Oh yeah, this is neighborhood. Yeah, we, we've already. So, so here's where we're at just to be, you know, the, the you know, give away too many secrets here. I'm just saying like, you yeah, know, it, well, and it was more of the legalities of, of the name and stuff like that. I don't, I don't want, you know, we got, thankfully we've got a lot of people listening to podcasts and stuff like that. And I don't want someone to like steal the web. You know what I mean? They, they could, they yeah. could jump me out. What they actually do is people will like buy a website and then if you want it, you have to pay them for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like $15,000 oh, yeah. or something like that. So I just got to be careful because, you know, my life's kind of public. But um, we've already selected the neighborhood. And so it's it's the price range that we want. It's the it's the style house that these people have jobs. They're probably not going to want to go to, you know, buy a bunch of equipment and work on the weekends on their yard. They're, you know, it, it's very common for this neighborhood to have lawn care and landscaping Um companies, you know, take care of their property. And it's about an hour from where my uh, previous, you know, business I started in 2011. It's, it's on the whole other side of, of town. Um, there's just where I used to work, Gwinnett County had 1 million people and it's just too many people. So this is in a yeah. little bit more of a rural area, but it's a very, very nice neighborhood. So I've and already you said we are, are, you have a partner or something? Yes. Yeah, a team. It, it's uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm teasing you guys a little bit, but um, that's fine. We got we got a team, man. I I ain't chucking the truck. We're rolling. I just didn't know if maybe you were like bipolar and you referred to yourself as we, you know? <laughs> no, as in as in multiple people. Oh, um, multiple. Okay, good. Yeah. So, um, all right. I see you and Bidju already having a conversation on here, but he somebody asked him, "Did you charge by the hour or square foot?" He said he charged by the hour. But you know, again, Paul, you're you you talk about that some like really when you're mowing. And I, almost any kind of lawn care or service, it, you're, you know, your time is is not the only factor, but it's definitely a probably one of the most important. Yeah, and Benji, if if I could encourage you, there's a guy on YouTube named the Lawn Care Millionaire, Jonathan Potashnik, and if you go if you go back in the like, they're like 11 year old videos or nine year old videos. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, Jason, but he has a whole list where he actually talks about. Um, how we're in the business of selling labor. We're in the business of selling time. Listen to him talk about how you price your time because that's what you're doing. And if, if you just look at the square foot, you're going to, it's deceiving because not every 3000 square foot turf area is the same. You really need to go by time. And so I, uh, I've, I've learned a lot from binge watching on YouTube for free He's called the Lawn Care Millionaire, Jonathan Potashnik. Great yeah, stuff. He's, been, he's very successful uh, at what he does. And is that, um, Paul, when you say time, are you factoring in like drive time too? Or is that like oh, more yeah. so just, a, okay. Oh, yeah. Especially in Atlanta. Yeah, you guys, I, I, I was in Atlanta this week. Uh, really? For like 10 minutes. I turned around and came back and then said, I can't uh, wait to get out of here from the traffic and everything. But, you, you know, I can't imagine. With, spray equipment or? No, uh, I, I went to a, a lawn shop to buy uh, buy some other equipment. So anyway, but yes, I just had to run over there real quick. I left my home like four thirty in the morning and got over there, and got back. You know, but uh, yeah, the traffic. I can imagine in no, in a city like that, like where I live, you know, it's not traffic's not a huge factor, but I still want to be close by. Uh, yeah, I'm out at the lake, Paul. So you may I hear I hear like. There's a great blue heron. They make loud noises even at night. So you, if you hear some, I'm sitting on the back porch. So loud, oh. loud oh. birds may uh, come in here. You're outside. Uh, yeah, on screened okay. in porch. So uh, Paul asked him for square <laughs> or mowing. So and he does mowing. All right. Let's see here. Let's get some more questions here. And this guy said he does. Uh, he subcontracts to Fert 
but does everything else. Yeah, the people, uh, you guys sub it out to people like me. I get uh, had to give a quote for a mowing guy today. So Jose says, hi. Hey, if anybody of you guys listen to Paul on his podcast, let, let us hear from you on the, let us know. I think we'd like to hear that. All right. Neighborhood says he charges by the square foot, by the hour, doesn't pay enough. Well, you it, by the hour could pay enough if you just go up on your hourly rate. If by the hour could be, you know, four hundred dollars an hour if you want to. So, uh, yeah, na- anyway. neighborhood lawn care. One thing my mentor taught me years ago, and I think it's good, is always put on your quote the square footage, because when you turn in a, you know, a quote to the customer and it says uh, three thousand four hundred and twenty-two square feet. They're going to just say, wow, the, their perception of you is that you got your stuff in order. Even if you don't do your pricing off the square foot, I still think you should measure the square foot and present that to the customer. It's going to help you to charge premium pricing when they realize that you're not chucking the truck. You're not Rick's mowing. You got your, your act together that you measured the square feet of their turf area. So I would definitely include that somewhere on the quote, and it's going to help you convert higher premium pricing for sure. Yeah, I think even like if you're doing some sort of pine straw or, or weed control in the beds, I mean, you're measuring the flower bed areas. You can um, count how many shrubs there are, you know, just take deep, be detailed like that. I do think it, from the customer perception is going to help you help you be detailed in your pricing, but help them see that you take your business serious. Hey, Jason, is it really necessary to fertilize the lawn every spring and summer? Uh, I would say I would say, yeah, Eric, um, you know. My understanding, again, uh, is that is that the grass is gonna, you, you know, a lot of that those nutrients that you put out there with with the fertilizer, they're gonna be spent by the next year. Okay, so they're they're it's not like your um, fertilizer. A lot of these quick release fertilizers, I mean, you're getting like four to six weeks out of them, and then and then they're gone. So not only um, sometimes every spring and summer, multiple times during one year, depending on what kind of products you're using. Uh, but yeah, you, you got to replenish the nutrients back in the soil. All right, let's see. Barb says I put down fertilizer on my Bermuda lawn April the eighth. Soil test stated low in nitrogen and phosphorus. I put down twenty four oh eleven. When do I fertilize again? What r- fertilizer do I use? Uh, well, you know, Barb, I, I say this, um, and I, I don't know where you live, but you know, if you if you like here, I'm in Alabama. Okay, if, I'm, if you got Bermuda grass, I'm assuming you're in the South as well. But you know, uh, I think Wednesday night. I don't know, if Paul. If you looked at the forecast, we're supposed to get yeah. out to 38, 38 degrees. Okay, so your your Bermuda is just not going to take off. Uh, don't don't get frustrated with your fertilizer and say it's just not working. It's not as green as I want it to be. A lot of it's going to have to do with the weather. So my advice would be. Um, you know, you can use a, a similar fertilizer to what you used, uh, but maybe put that out on April 8th. And it's, if it's not greening up, it probably has more to do with the weather. So give it, wait till it gets into May and you, and you get the temperatures up consistently 85 degrees. And, uh, and then when you put fertilizer out, I think you're going to see a lot of things happen. Following up with that, Jason, what I've noticed these core aerator guys out here, you know, just plucking away and it, it's going to be 30. 5, 36, 37 here in Atlanta in a couple of nights. How does that affect it when you have that open, you know, the open hole on the Bermuda and we get this deep, cold night? You know, I think it would have to get really cold to, to, to get down there and zap a Bermuda lawn. But I, I will say if, if we get a frost, and I don't know that I'm thinking we won't in my area, but, you know, in some areas, obviously they will. Uh, like my Bermuda, this was the problem with like scalping your Bermuda lawn early, which I, I do and I tell other people to do. You know, you get out there and you scalp it low in mm-hmm. March or so. And my yard was the greenest one on the block. I mean, I, and my customers, some of them know where I live and they drove by and they said, how come your lawn's greener than mine? You know, I, and I said, well, I'm mostly because I just mowed it earlier. Well, what happened? We got a frost. Mine had greened up real quick and then we get a late frost. Boom. My whole yard looked was almost yellow. Now it came mm-hmm. back a couple days later, so I, I wouldn't worry about with the aeration. I, I think it's more um, just that that new plant growth. It, it's that real young plant growth is going to get zapped by the frost. Well, Not can killed, I, just damaged. Can I, can, can I ask you another question before we keep rolling? Yeah. When is when is we live in the same part of the equator? Uh, yeah, that's right. Know, Alabama and Al- Atlanta. When is the best time to core aerate? 
for our warm season Bermuda's allegiance. Yeah, I mean, uh, people around here they, they they've already started doing it, you know. But I mean, I I don't know if I was going to do it, I, I'd probably do it like April or so. I, I think from a lawn care perspective, you could probably do it, you know, just about any time. But if you do it too early, like let's say you do it in March. Um, I'm not so much worried about the roots and all that, but you're just going to have all those uh, plugs laying on top of the lawn because you're not really mowing regularly. So I, you know, same thing with like top dressing or something. Can you top dress your yard in March? Well, sure. But it's not going to really start filling in, you know, for us warm season guys until May and June, you know, it starts really growing. So, you know, I would do it like April or May or something if it was me. All right. Hey, this guy says he made it, Paul. Do you Al Blaze from Miami? Yes, sir. There you go. Thanks for watching. And, and Paul, I had somebody show. I had somebody come send me a message yesterday and it, it freaked me out a little bit, but because they were saying, Hey Jason, I met you at the, the meetup at the uh the Hank the Tampa Bay meetup. What was it? And, and we talked. There. I know I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was saying, "Yeah, we talked about this and talked about that," and uh, and I was like, "Wow, that that I, I was just confirming with you that I wasn't there because I remember not being there." But uh, it was on just, Friday night. You guys left out. We early, left on I, went, uh, I, early Thursday morning. But actually, I, yeah, I'll say this, Paul. I had to wake Paul. <laughs> okay, don't. This is a life lesson. Don't schedule an Uber if Uber <laughs> Uber will let you get on there and say. <laughs> Oh, what time do you need a ride? And I put on there. I mean, our flight was super early, and uh, I had to put on there like we need a ride like four a.m. or something crazy. Oh, and Uber says okay, confirmed. You know, well, guess what? About I'm I'm literally standing outside the door at like four in the morning waiting on my Uber, and, and it's like, and I'm looking at the little Uber map, and there's no cars coming, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't feel good about this. And in like five minutes before the time they're supposed to pick it up, Uber says, oh, we're sorry. Uh, no drivers are available. I said, well, that, you know, it'd been good if you let me know that last night, Uber. I, I, so I literally go wake Paul up at a, at a who knows what hour of the day. And he uh, four, drove us. 4 a.m. You're, you're leaving out one component of the story, Jason. Okay, Wednesday night, I told Jason, because I was exhausted. I yeah. said, whatever you do, don't wake me up. Here's my keys. If, if for whatever reason, Uber doesn't show up, just drive my car to the airport. Cause yeah. I, I had to go to the airport. To, I figured the next day I'd get my car. I, I wasn't worried about that. I was more concerned about sleeping in. So now it's 4 a.m. And uh, these guys right outside the hype house kept turning the lights on uh, when they're in the hot tub club at 2 a.m. So I'm barely get any rest. And then 4 a.m. <laughs> my door starts knocking. Jason with the sweet accent, you know, do you think you'd take us to the airport? And uh, I was like, oh. I didn't want to miss that flight. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I got to thinking, I was like, Paul, if I drive your rental car to the airport, what am I supposed to do with the key? Just leave, uh, throw it in the bushes? Up the, open up the gas tank thing and just put them in there. Okay. Well, we, we didn't talk about that part. So I just thought, yeah. I don't know. Well, hide them well. underneath the thing. Anyway, I took yeah. Jason to the airport and then I come back and then Naylor's like, hey, you Uber didn't come pick me up because it was having a problem with the GPS on the island. That's what it was. Oh. And then so uh, then I had to take Naylor after you. So it was it was eventually. Oh, okay. Well, back that was back one of the nicest thing. That was very thoughtful. Uh, this says the pursuit of growth is his. I like that. Um, I like that name. Uh, good evening. All right, Meat Man. Hey, Jason. Should I name my son Turf Type Tall Fescue? And you could call him Three uh, T F, I guess for short, you know, or whatever. Um, you know that that's that's really up to you. I I I wouldn't. I wouldn't go with that. Um, no, I wouldn't either, meat man. You could say that again. What did Al say earlier? Al Blades. I'm not sure, but Al Blades is, uh, he's a lawn bro from Florida and uh, he's a friend of the Green Industry Podcast. He just actually made a hip hop song for uh, for the Green Industry. I don't know if you've heard that yet. No, pretty- I haven't heard that. I wish we had it. We'd play it right now. But uh, hey, this one for you, Paul. Is Mr. Producer real? Yes, he is. He is real. And there's a there's been a rumor floating around for a while that he's not real, but he is the producer on uh, Fullerton's podcast, uh, Naylor Taliaferro's LCR Media podcast and um, Caleb Allman's podcast, my podcast. Uh, there's a guy named Tim Schmoyer who who's not even in the lawn care realm. He does something called video creators. 
Um, he's also his producer. So he has, and then he's a fo- producer for a football player. So he has six or seven shows um, that he produces. And for whatever reason, he, he never wants his face to be on camera. There used to be a show called um, Inspector Gadget. Oh, and yeah. Mr. Claw, you'd never see him. I don't know if you know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And you know, a home improvement, that neighbor, he would never put his yeah, face Yeah, what was that guy's name? Uh, I forget. Somebody maybe knows in the comments. But uh, where does Mr. Producer live in Alabama or no? No, he, he lives in Georgia. And there's actually. Okay. <laughs> so real quick, Jason, he actually called somebody to come out and do his yard, give him a quote. And so the guy, the guy shows up and Mr. Producer is wearing a Toro hat I gave him. And this guy's giving him a quote, and he's he's hearing Mr. Producer's voice, and he's like, "You know what? I feel like I've met you somewhere before." And he couldn't he couldn't connect the dots. And then finally, he's like, "Wait a minute, are you Mr. Producer?" And <laughs> he's like, "Yeah." And he was freaking out. He's like, "I listen to Brian Fullerton and Paul James." He's like, "You're Mr. Producer?" And then uh, he's like, "I'm cutting Mr. Producer's grass," and he like couldn't yeah. believe it. And. Oh, um, and and he's like, I, I thought it was weird that a, a guy called me to cut the grass and has a Toro hat on. I've never seen, you know, anyone wear a Toro hat before. Yeah. And so anyway, yeah, there's there's another lawn bro um, that actually cuts his grass. He's real. Uh, Randy says, uh, that's a great story. Randy says, what is the steel weed eater head you said you use, Jason, a quick spool? Uh, a lot of people, I use those speed feed heads. I think those things are unbelievable. I've, when I discovered those, I have flashbacks to when I was a kid seeing people wrap that line around and then it gets undone or you get it, you know, not done just right. It won't feed and you beat the head on the ground. You know, the speed feed heads are, are just unbelievable. And, they, and they're made, it's not for steel. I mean, they'll fit just, just about any, uh, they come with an adapters and they'll fit just about any commercial trimmer, probably some residential ones too. All right, somebody on your short story said you look like Tom Brady. I get that uh, a, a lot on here, Paul. You know, me and Tom are both uh, we're champions. You know what can I say? I mean, we're we're Tom's a champion. I'm a champion. We're champions in slightly different ways, but champions of life. What do you think about that? Yeah, you you do look like him. You you guys have uh, different trajectories. Uh, I was down there, and uh, yeah, we do have slight different. We, I was in we, Tampa. In we were in Tampa on the on the. Super Bowl weekend, man. Jason, because no, none, none of us wanted to watch the Super Bowl, and Jason's like, couldn't believe it. We're, we're all like wanting to talk YouTube algorithm and stuff like that, and Jason, like, y'all gonna watch the game, and Jason's, Jason's bragging because he's like, well, Kansas State gonna blow them out anyway. I and thought Kansas State was gonna won. blow them out, but yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul's picked me up from the airport. We're going and, and staying with the other guys. I said, I said, oh, they're probably uh, watching the game, you know. And Paul's like. Those guys don't even know who's playing in the Super Bowl. I mean, they just uh, – you know, Paul and I talk about football sometimes, but we were probably in the minority on that one. All right, Garrett Ards, he's one of my uh, mowing buddies here local. Good to hear from you, Garrett. Thanks for being a part. You got a question for Paul. Bring it on. This is the time to, to talk. Look at this joker at Paul Jameson, Matt D. Matt, you got to put your last name on there if you're going to call him a joker, but uh, – Keep friend up. of the Good show, place. friend of the show. It's just friend of the he, show. All right, yeah, Matt. If they, if, they use, right, if they say raggedy joker, there's certain terms that uh, Green Industry Podcast listeners know. So, okay. friend of the show, Matt. Now, I'm actually a pretty regular listener, Paul. Uh, you know, I, I I may not. Now, here's the thing. When I'm spraying yards, I, I'm listening regularly to podcasts. When I start fertilizing, I'm on those machines, and I don't uh, have the – fancy earbuds and all that stuff so so I, I can't hear as good uh so i don't i don't get to listen as much but i I'm, i might not listen every day but then i'll catch two or three episodes at a time and you know and just see what you got going on what you doing i'm hitting record on my podcast machine because i was like this could be a podcast i could play a portion oh, there you of go. on the show i just thought about it Jose says, I'm new into this and, and learning. Thank you for all you're doing. We're happy to do it, Jose. And uh, you, you can go follow Paul on his YouTube ventures and on the Green Industry Podcast. And appreciate you uh, joining me here. When do I mow new Tiffway 419 sod? Uh, well, Cody, I, here's what I would do. I would uh, I would wait. You know, don't. there's no hurry, really, okay? And, and when you mow that first couple of times, like I like to keep my Bermuda nice and low. I mean, I, I, I drop my deck as low as it'll go, which I think is an inch and a half. And, and you got to mow it pretty often. But now if I had brand new sod, I'm not going to just 
you know, scalp mm-hmm. it down to nothing. You know, just kind of go easy on it, okay, and let it get rooted. Uh, and it, you know, by, but the good thing is, once it gets hot, that Bermuda is going to take off, even if you just put it down this year. Um, so, but just you know, don't do nothing crazy. I'd mow it less often and just take a little off the top until it until it's sure enough rooted. Yeah, uh, Cody. Yeah, I, I, go ahead, Jason. No, I'd say it's going to be pretty obvious. You know, it's going to start growing and get all shaggy, but you don't want to. Uh, be spraying it or fertilizing it. Just just water it and just let it get rooted before you do anything crazy. You got anything to add to that, Paul? I was just going to say, there's no forgiveness if you if you scalp it if if you scalp a sod that's not rooted yet, it probably isn't going to survive. So so cut it high until you know it's taking root. For yeah. Sure. Especially if it's for a customer, somebody else's, you know, I mean, even if it survives, you're going to, you're just going to stress it out big time. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you recommend for po- Poanya? Foxtail goose grass, rescue grass. Maybe I'm not measuring correctly, but it seems like these weeds this year have created a tolerance or something I have to, uh, to respray. Well, um, Edward, I don't know what kind of grass you have. That That's always helpful. You know, I deal with warm season grasses and I will say, you know, with Poa, Poa annua, um, it, there is some some tolerance to that. They, they've um, you know so some weeds do develop tolerance over time. But you know what you want to do is is try to put your pre-emergent out in the fall um, to help prevent your your poa. Now your foxtail is going to be a, a warm season weed. You're going to put that out. Um, I, I don't deal with rescue grass much here, but uh, and goose grass I see it every now and then, but it, it's usually a little bit you know further north. But anyway, put your, your your fall pre-emergent help with the POA, put your, um, you know, your early application before they germinate, uh, you know, like in January, February, again, I don't know where you live, but that would help. Uh, he says here, come on, give us your secrets. <laughs> I, 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 I like spectacle. Not holding back anything. Spectacle in the fall. Um, yeah, if you use spectacle, boy, that'll make a huge difference on your um, POA. And then, like I said, I I go out there and spray prodiamine in January and go back and spray it again in March. And, yeah, do you get some foxtail breakthrough? Yeah. But if you have a breakthrough, you go in there and you can use solitaire. You can, um, you know, there, there's a lot of pro- – I, I will say foxtail is a little bit tough to get rid of once you got it. But if you can, per, you know, put get your pre-emergent out, that should definitely help. All right. Jose says, I'm a teen. I'm trying to pass out flowers to grow my business. But will it help? Uh, but, but, Will it still help even though everyone mows their own grass? Well, if they're, if they're mowing their own grass, they you know most of those guys are not not going to want to give it up. But I would, uh, Jose, I would look at the yards that um, that you tell it. Like by this time, again in our area, you can tell who's mowing their grass and who's not. So if they hadn't mowed their grass yet, you know, then hey, stick a flower on there, you know, for on their door. So what do you think, Paul? Yeah, and Jose, I would look at what is the um, houses. You can go on Zillow.com and you know select the neighborhood you want to have route density in, and then just look: are those homes in the one hundred thousands, two hundred thousands, three hundred thousands? I personally like three hundred thousands and above because most of those folk they don't have time to cut their grass because they they have to work to to keep up with their lifestyle and things like that, and so they're more apt to. Uh, pay a professional to to maintain their lawn because at at the three hundred thousand mark they have the HOAs pretty much you know try to patrol the neighborhood to keep it looking up to the standards to keep the home prices up and things like that and so you start you know working in in the neighborhoods that don't have the money a lot of folks will you know to save money they'll do their own yard or, or things like that and so I, I like to go where the money is for sure and so. Zillow is real simple. Just just pick out your neighborhood and be like, oh, you know, three hundred fifty thousand dollars homes. This is a good one to work in. And uh, yeah, I, I like and, that idea, Paul. I never thought about using Zillow. Yeah, and, and actually, that's what I've been doing recently. As I've been targeting where we're gonna um, launch this new uh, landscaping business, and then um, the other thing is make sure it's an open market because there's some of these neighborhoods. Like they'll actually hire one company to do all 200 homes. And if you're in there passing out flyers and there's already, you know, ABC lawn care does all of them. You're just in vain. So just, uh, you could drive into the neighborhood and just ask a couple people walking their dog or whatnot and say, Hey, do do you guys have one company that does the whole neighborhood or is an open market and just confirm before you start your marketing blitz. But yeah, go to Zillow and 
300,000 is kind of my limit. Like anything less than that, it's been a headache to me for, for maintenance and, and landscaping and stuff like that. And then anything above that, you're, you're going to have folks that are going to be hiring out for sure. The majority of them. Yeah, that's a great tip, Paul. All right, Nick says, hey, guys, I'm seeding 12,000 square feet of Zenith Zoysia next month. Any recommendations for weed control besides drive, accelerate? Uh, Nick, I know why you're seeding 12,000 square feet of Zoysia because it's going to cost you an arm and a leg if you were going to sod it. You know, you're thinking, let's just say you got a generous pallet of 500 square feet. Most of them are like 450 square feet then you're still looking at 24 pallets. At, and let's say you got a deal and got it for 200 a pallet. That's 4,800 if you did it yourself. A landscape company is probably going to charge you 600 a pallet times 24. Uh, you're getting close to 100, 100 grand. Uh, anyway, uh, no, my math's wrong. I'm sorry. That's horrible math. Where, where, uh, where are you getting Zoysia for 200 bucks a pop, man? I need to find out that farm. I, I've seen it, but my math was bad. What's uh two two twenty four pallets times six hundred? Six hundred times twenty four is fourteen thousand four hundred. Six that's six hundred dollars times twenty four pallets. Yeah, fourteen thousand four hundred. How you okay. got one hundred thousand fourteen thousand? Well, I, that was my markup. That was my com- uh, commission. For- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I, I'm actually I'm not too okay with math usually. That was pitiful. Um, well, here's what I would say. One, I've had people asking me about growing zoysia from seed. Um, I, I, I hope it works for you, Nick, okay? I don't know a lot of people that successfully done that, um, but – I would wait till it's sure enough hot. Okay, I wouldn't like you're saying next month, um, uh, um, May. I would I would make sure the temperatures are 85 or maybe even warmer than that, and then make sure you got a watering plan for that 12,000 square feet because zoysia. I mean, the the thing is like with Bermuda, and I and I love zoysia. I'm, I'm not trying to talk you out of zoysia, but Bermuda, if you got 10 percent of it to to grow then it would fill in on its own, no problem. I, I really believe that, possibly this year. Zoysia, if you, you you need to get really good coverage because if you get, you know, let's say 50% coverage, it may be two years before it fills in completely because it, it just does not spread fast at all. So I would have a watering plan for sure. I'd wait till it's hot. I'd probably try to do it a time, you know, even if, unless you've got irrigation there where like look at the weather and say it's hot and it's look like rain next week. So here's my chance, you know, but you got to figure out how to get it through this first summer. And just know that if you don't get good germination, you're going to have a lot of bare spots. It's going to be difficult to fill in. Yeah, I want to, Nick, if it's, I want to touch out with a 10 foot pole if, if there's time to re- present to the customer to uh, sod it or not. Cause Zena Zoysia seed, I, I've tried it before and was unsuccessful. And then on my dime, I ended up having to put in sod for the guy. So uh, I, I've been very unsuccessful with that. I, I, I would just, shoot them straight and say it's going to be expensive but we we're either going to put in the the sod and do it the right way um otherwise i think you, it's going to be difficult to to get that to grow the way your customer is thinking it's going to grow and they're just trying yeah. to save money but it, it's not going to work uh, in my yeah. opinion and nick i didn't even answer your actual question but what i would do you know make sure you 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 scrape it down to the dirt or or spray it or whatever you gotta do to get rid of everything and, and then when you see it, let's say you're going to do this in may um, you know, th- you shouldn't have crabgrass. You know, you just kill everything, <laughs> and and so you're starting with kind of a blank slate. I wouldn't worry about spraying anything. I mean, your your goal is just get it to live this first year. And I wouldn't even think about a herbicide until the fall application. You know, September, October, and that would be only if it you got pretty good coverage. So, uh, you know, and then you can do your your uh, pre emerge application if you know things are going well so that that would be my let me just say one more thing jace i'm trying to save this guy a a a headache during the spring rush you know i i I do not do uh seed i just don't like it it's sod or nothing and so um just that's the lesson i've learned the hard way and i i just it's a pain in the butt so if if there's any way to get out of it i know you sound like you kind of got stuck in the twelve thousand square foot seed of zoysia but if, if you can backpedal out of that it, it would be it, you'd save yourself a lot of headache for sure yeah i've had several people ask me about this recently and i told them i said listen i 
I know there's people that's done it, but I personally have never met anyone who's successfully grown zoysia from seed. Now, that don't mean it's impossible or it never can't be done. I, I, I know it can be, but uh, it, it's not uh, easy. And like I said, it's not like Bermuda where you, if it if it doesn't really work, it'll fill in on its own anyway. It's like it, it needs to come up and look nice. All right. Uh, let's see. I am a full-time teacher. And turning away, now this is a little bit different. You see the YouTube sign there's covered up. I'm assuming that says hello, but we're missing the O there. <laughs> um, I'm a full-time teacher turning away two to three quotes a day for weekly lawn maintenance. Four season, minimal marketing. We have, a, we have 60 yards. See the potential to take this full time. All right, Paul, you probably get people in this situation a lot of times where, the, where they're kind of like on that bring they got that full-time job but and they're sort of doing what they can on the side and then they're just sort of what what do you tell people that's trying to make that decision should i keep it part-time or should i make the jump yeah so you want to get the boat close to the dock so it's not a huge leap but it, it it's kind of uh easy you, you know you're living out there on the lake jason you just step from the dock right into the boat and uh, I would definitely pray about it, you know, ask the Lord, is, is this something he wants you to do or not? And then other uh, things to consider is your financial situation. Are you married? Does your wife have steady income? How many kids do you have? How, how much of a risk of it? How much of a risk is it? If you're just a single guy and, you you know, you don't have that much responsibility, then I'm more, um, lean, you know, I'm, I'm more encouraging. To go for it. Go for it. Go for it. If you got five kids at home and your wife's a stay at home wife slash mom. And, you know, the the stakes are kind of higher Then really be conservative and make sure the boat's close to the dock. But if you have less responsibility, you know, you better be working from sunrise to sunset those first few months and making sure there's a gigantic margin between revenue and, you know, your expenses and, and you're, pro you're very profitable and you're working hard and you're charging the right amount and all of that. But, you know, pray about it, get the boat close to the dock. And then if you do feel peace about it, go for it and work hard because, I, I've never looked back on, you know, the job that I've left to, to be a full-time entrepreneur. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, working a job anymore. And so I think that uh, when it's the right time, go for it, Dustin, and uh, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, Dustin, on my uh, channel, I, I interviewed some people about a month or two ago and I actually talked to him today and he, he left the job. It's a husband and wife team and he, uh, they just started their business this year. I talked to him today and he was just, he's, he's loving it, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, so there, there's some definite advantages. Um, certainly some advantages of being a full-time teacher. I imagine you got good insurance and retirement and all that. So, um, there's some, a lot of things to consider, but, uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, nobody that, can really make that decision for you. Yeah. But to, if you already have 60 yards, I mean, if you if you're mo edge trim and blowing, that's a pretty decent amount of revenue right there. And then if you're upselling to those sixty properties alone, mulch, pine straw, seasonal flowers, things of that nature, there's always some kind of odd job that needs done on a property. You should be able to have a full time income with what you already got. So I, I, it sounds like your boat's pretty close to the dock. So yeah, I would just I would say your prayers and make sure you got peace about it and uh, make the move, man. All right. Love here says, hello, any good sprayer that's good and cheaper? Thanks. Uh, well, I don't know if you're talking about a, like a spray tank. You know, I, Graham is, I use those Graham spray tanks and, and they have different options, but they, I wouldn't necessarily describe them as cheap. But I don't know if you're talking about that or you're talking about like a handheld spray or a backpack spray. So uh, elaborate on your, uh, what you're exactly looking for. Maybe we can give you some directions. Al gives you the laughing tear face. I don't, I don't know. You and Al are having your own private conversation. I can't even follow it here. All right. Alex says, hello, Jason. Jose, don't give up. All right. So that was the guy we were talking to earlier about uh, getting started with the putting out the flyers and everything. Uh, all right. Jose says, how would you edge if cars are very close? <laughs> well, uh, well, I'll tell you this. If you're a, uh, if you you know if it's a commercial property and it's got a parking lot full of cars, you might want to consider doing that on a Saturday or early in the morning or something like that, and try to avoid that because even if you can be careful around the car, it's just it's a pain. And and if there's cars and you get grass on them, you got to be careful blowing them off. I mean, it's just a a lot of headaches. Um, if it's a 
an individual customer, you know, it's got their car. Like I had one, I remember this guy kept his car immaculate and it was like some fancy sports car. So, and I, I just knocked door. I said, Hey, would you mind putting your car in the garage? I just don't want to, you know, get it dirty for you. But what would you say, Paul? Yeah, I think Jose, we talked to earlier with prob problem with getting customers. And it sounds like you might be on the wrong end of town. Um, just from the questions you're asking, I, you know, I, I would find a nice neighborhood and, uh, you know, cause I, sometimes in, in the not so nice neighborhoods, Jason, they all park, you know, everywhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, if it's the same Jose, I know we've got a lot of Jose's in here tonight, but, um, that, that might, that might not answer your question for this specific property, but you, you might want to consider relocating the business to a, a neighborhood where, you know. It, there, there's not cars all stacked on top of each other. They actually park in the garage and things like that. Yeah. East Tennessee long here says, hi guys, Paul, you know, we've talked about this somewhat. I, I like that. He's his business name is kind of East Tennessee lawn care. You know, it's kind of lets you know, it, it sounds, uh, sounds big, whether he's big or small or whatever. Uh, and it, and it lets you know, Hey, you're in East Tennessee. I'm your guy. You know, now he may get some calls in East Tennessee that like, like I'm Alabama lawn pros and I get called mm -hmm. four hours away. I'm sorry. I don't service that, but I'd rather sound too big than too small. Yeah. I like but, the, it. tells what geographic region he's from and it tells what he does. He's lawn care in East Tennessee. So I, I like it. Although I would, uh, if you guys haven't picked your name already, I'd be more niche down than that. The name of the neighborhood or the County, uh, just so that you vet in your name, you know, you're not having people call from too far away, but yeah, you know, I, I don't like the the last name in the business name. Cause then I mean, when you go to sell it one day and you're, 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 you're um, John's landscaping, well then the new company buys it and then they're going to say, well, where's Johnny? And he's yeah. not there. So yeah, don't, don't name your name company after your name. In my opinion, name it I after the region and then name it with what you do. Are you landscaping or are you, fertilization which you know lawn care what do you do so there you go i feel the same way paul but then i i see so many businesses that it that, that have just their name and it like if you think about restaurants you got wendy's you got uh mcdonald's you got sam's club yeah, and I, how they get so huge yeah but that's different because in our service-based business if you're jason's lawn care then part of what they're buying is jason that's right. But your Alabama lawn pros, if you go to sell that one day, the new the new folks can it just you have you have more value at the sale. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm, I, I I'm, agree with you. I'm starting a new business, and I'll tell you right now, it, it, Jameson, and in my name, I have a I have a popular podcast. You know, I, I could use that, you know, to to upsell and things like yeah. that. But I our our name is is of a region, and then it's of landscaping. So yeah. we'll reveal that soon. But I, I I'm a firm believer. You want to start it from day one to sell it. And that's what I'm I'm starting yeah, to do. I got you. Paul's prime cuts, you know. That, no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, whatever. All right, uh, uh, Jose says uh, that was good advice. How many Jose's are we? You, you, you got uh, a. This is different this Jose, man. This they, is, got different, they got different logos. We got a lot of Jose's. This is Jose Tapia. Another guy was Jose Something else. Um, but anyway, he says it was a good idea to put the quote uh, to show the customer detailed job. Yeah, I think like I said it, it helps you as the business owner to, to make sure you're being detailed and not just throwing a number out there, but also the customer perception like, hey, man, I, here's your quote. And they say, wow, I mean, I really do think that would make a difference. Um, oh, OK. Al, he's done shifted off of Paul. He's focused on me now, Paul. Um, what's your favorite grass to maintain? Uh, you know, I, I do weed control, but I, you know, I've mowed a lot of yards too. I, from, um, I, I guess I'd say zoysia are, are the best looking ones. And I'm dealing with zoysia, Bermuda, centipede, St. Augustine. So I don't have any fescue or, fescue or Kentucky bluegrass or anything like that. Um, so I mean, my zoysias are, are the best looking yards. Um, I, I don't know, favorite, uh, I mean, if, if all my yards were Bermuda, I'd be fine with that because you, you can buy, fix nearly anything in a Bermuda yard where if you got some problems in a Zoysia yard or Centipede or St. Saint, Saint Augustine, you got to be a little bit more careful. So, uh, But, yeah, I guess if I was going to answer that straight up, it'd be Zoysia. From a mowing perspective, I, again, the Zoysias look the best to me. 
Um, but I like uh, probably just like mowing Bermuda because I, I can just keep it, you know, real low and tight and everything. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I used to just talk a little bit ugly about Bermuda, but I've kind of grown to like it more and more. Uh, looking good, guys. No raggedy here. Hey, yeah. Mike Pletz from Canada. What's up, friend? Okay. There you go. Yeah, we bring, you know, we got a good information here. Crowd. Yeah, uh, right. guys, how to how, how to hardscape. He has a uh, podcast as well for hardscaping. So oh, big, good. Ticket, big ticket money. And uh, he's a yeah. friend, friend of mine, Mike Plett. So definitely check him out. What happened, Jason? All right, guys, Jason, Jason will be right back. Hopefully you can still hear me. Tom Doby mower repair says, Hey, Mikey, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, Jason on my computer. I can't see, I can see you on YouTube. So I'll just keep rolling here, guys. We'll get Jason back in a minute. Maybe it froze. I don't know. So, uh, if I'm still live, which I don't know if I am because, uh, Jason's thing, uh, is just swirling around, but, um, I have a new YouTube channel, guys. It's called Paul Jamison Landscaping. And uh, we post videos over there of, uh, you know, lawn maintenance work, landscaping jobs. I just got my first pressure washer today. It's the, the P, uh, PW4200 from Echo. So uh, I'm pumped for this thing. Oh, man, now I'm just solo in here. Where, <laughs> what is going on? All right. We'll just roll with it until Jason comes back. I don't know what happened to his uh, computer thing. Let me try to boot it back up. All right. That's what Jason says. So uh, you're in the show. I'm here. All right. We're going to keep things going, guys. Uh, Jason will be back here in a minute. But my YouTube channel is Paul Jameson Lawn Care. And I uh, got my first pressure washer today. Let's move this over here. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Echo sent me the PW4200 pressure washer, and uh, this thing was powerful. And we were, uh, actually broke concrete, and uh, we had the uh, small little zero-degree nozzle, and uh, my friend Andrew was pressure washing, and he's like, whoa, and he, and he cut out a piece of the concrete. So then we had to put the 15-degree nozzle on it. So for those of you who are in pressure washing, uh, we'll put some pressure washing videos up there as well 85 people watching we are um going strong here jason is gonna be returning here in in uh, momentarily but uh i have a podcast guys uh green industry podcast where we talk about uh lawns lessons life no that's brian fullerton's podcast fullerton unfiltered podcast i binge listen to podcasts all the time so uh that's actually <laughs> fullerton's tagline jason but that was hey. the weirdest thing paul can it's you hear right. me? Yeah, it, it's all right. Um, we had 87 people watching, and it went down to 80. I, I was just trying to tread water until we got you to come I back. Thought, I thought well, it was I, my computer is plugged in to the wall, and and it, and it gave me like a one second notice said your battery's run, running low, uh, and then it shut off. And I, so I have no idea uh, what we just, just happened. We just, kept, we just kept things rolling. Well, I, I knew I, I knew that's your professional background in radio. I had no doubt. So I'm just glad I was able to get back on because, man, we, we got to go through these questions. We got so many questions right here. So we're, we're going to uh, rapid fire. Randy says you skipped my question. Uh, anybody else know? Hold on. What? Oh, man, there's a zillion questions on here, Paul. All right. So we're, we're going to fly rapid through these. Fire. Let's go. If you ask. All right. Let's go quick. Uh, soil test does not include nitrogen too mobile in the soil. That was a statement. Jose, that's a good question. I would just ask him to move the vehicle. If you don't feel comfortable, skip that part. Good idea. Tell him to move the vehicle. Starting with the weed control and fertilization business and test in a few weeks. What are your thoughts on starting LLC and business stuff now versus waiting until the state approves the license? I'm not worried. I just go ahead and get it out of the way. If, you, if you're yep. moving forward, if you're moving forward and you, you feel confident, then uh, just go with it. I'm at, my light shut off too. Give me, hold on. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Get, get your Boom. license. There you go. Oh, now look at this profession. This is championship broadcasting here. Yeah. Folks. Look at this. Look at All this. Right. Go Mitchell ahead and get your license. You. Yep. Jose, we are, we have not 
spared any time on Jose. So uh, I'm in Phoenix. I get it gets 115 degrees here in the summer. At what time frame when most of the work is done, other than winter time? I'm about to. Uh, what is that? Is that time frame when most of the work is done other than winter time? I'm about to start my lunch here. I, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, and would like to gauge the time frame for work. I, I don't know when your grass grows out there in Phoenix or, or people have, have grass out they there. They have so. AstroTurf. One of my customers, he used to play for the Falcons. He got shipped off to the Arizona Cardinals. And he wanted. He was asking me, he's like, everyone's got AstroTurf out here, Paul. And then yeah. he wanted me to put it in his backyard in Atlanta. I told him, forget about it. Yeah. I, uh, I ain't doing that. Yeah, I don't know. You just got to figure out when the grass grows out there. But you might have to get in the artificial turf business. Yeah, or, yeah. Jose, or, uh, artificial turf. Planting. Planting cactus for people. My daughter's yard is new construction Bermuda. Is it still it's still dormant? But a tall green grassy weed has come up all the lawns. I think it's crabgrass. All right, I'm I'm almost positive it's not crabgrass. Here's what's probably happened: they put this Bermuda sod out, and they and they think they need to throw uh, hay out all over the straw everywhere. You know, I don't know why they do that. It, it, it's like a requirement on some of these construction projects they, to keep stuff from washing. So, so mm -hmm. you got all that straw thrown everywhere, and it's probably just some cool season grass propping up. If you had crab crabgrass right now, it's so little um, you wouldn't even you know have to get on your hands and knees to see it. So, uh, yeah, a, a product like uh, Certainty or Katana or something will knock that out. And, and honestly, it'll probably die out when it gets hot if you don't want to. Um, if you don't want to spray it. Cheers from Alabama. Oklahoma is in the house. Ethan's Lawn Care in Lumberton, North Carolina. Thank you. Uh, if you see this, can you say hi? We What's see it. Perfectionist uh, Touch Lawn Care. Yeah, I kind of like that name. You know, I, the only thing I can see negative of that is people kind of, you get a yard that doesn't look perfect, they may uh, let you hear about it. Need a new string trimmer. Anybody... Any recommendations have tried Echo, but hey, I like Husqvarna. Oh, Echo 2620, <laughs> Ab, Woodworking Baker. Did you try the 2620? Yeah, Stone. I like Hus uh, Husqvarna 525 is is my go-to uh, at the at the moment. Will a turf grass growth regulator work for a weed field steep embankment? Uh, probably not great, honestly. I I, I don't. I don't know. It, it may slow it down some, but I love growth regulator, but I'm not sure that's the right application for it. Would you suggest organic or synthetic fertilizer pros and cons? I would let your market determine that if you're in California, uh, you may go organic. If you uh, in Alabama, you're going to want to go synthetic. So um, you skipped my question. I ask it again, Randy. I don't remember what you asked. Ben says, Hey guys, I'm trying not to skip anybody on here. Hey Ben. Ben was recently a guest on my podcast, guys. Good old Who? Alabama boy. Ben Neiman. He's from Alabama. I love Alabama. What a great state. Thanks for liking the name um, on my channel. We focus on growth on and off the lawn. Speaking of names, how do you like name Turf Logic? Um, yeah, I would check and see if there's uh, how many Turf Logics are already out there. Can you get the URL? Can you get a Facebook page? Can you get the Instagram? Uh, I like the name, but um, you might have to like be Turf Logic of Alabama or what, you know, like our turf logic of Atlanta or what, you know, you may have to, um, anyway, may have to add to it to, to make yours unique. I listen to your podcast while I mow yards on my lunch hour. Comfort Lawn Care, he contributes on here, Paul, and he's Thank you, a Comfort huge Lawn fan. Uh, and I need to leave a review for your book. I, your, I thought your book was great. James is my friend. He says the tool guy neighbor was Wilson. That's right. Wilson from Home Improvement. That is it. <laughs> That's right, Wilson. We used to watch that uh, a lot. Uh, oh, okay. So he's asking the, the surfactant. I usually use just the non-ionic surfactant in, in the, versus the methylated seed oil. Uh, now, if you're using like a product like Tribute Toll or something, you're trying to knock out douse grass, it, it may become a little more important to use the methylated seed oil. My understanding is that it's a little more natural to the plant, and it helps the plant take in the herbicide, but it's also going to – Heat it up a little bit. So you want to be careful using that in the summertime. All right. How's it going? Never Red, Rocks, hey, Red Rocks, friend of the show, friend of the show. You got more friends than I do, Paul. I only got you. You I only got about three friends. All right. Uh, Randy says, I did answer. So good. I'm, I'm, I don't like skipping people. Who makes the best, longest lasting electric hand tools? 
uh, I tell you what, I've got some uh, Milwaukee stuff, and, and it is great. But, uh, Paul, you got experience with any electric, I guess, battery-powered stuff? Yeah, well, in uh, last fall, I got to go to Toro's headquarters and see their new 60-volt lineup. And so I haven't used it out in the field, just in the showroom. And it was it was awesome in the showroom. So, um, I, you know, T Toro's a reputable brand. So I, I, I think that would be a good place to start. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to hear about surfactants. I just talked about those um, just just a minute ago, Stuart. I have a question. There you go. Uh, Jason, I've heard you talk about fertilizer that you use uh, that feeds for four months. My question is, how do you apply the lawns during that time? And can I piggyback on your custom blend? Yeah, I buy from Harold's. It's a 3806 um, blend. Uh, if you need, you can get in touch with me if you if you need help getting in touch with a a Harold's rep. I think actually you told me you're already using Harold's, but um, yeah, 3806 blend is what I use. And there's different, the, the Harold's um, slow release is, is called Polyon. It's the polymer coated fertilizer. There's other polymer coated fertilizer. That's the one I use. And they can mix it up with different blends um, to make it last longer, shorter, uh, things like that. All right. All right, Peter, uh, I'll tell you, buddy. We, we uh, all right, I'm skipping Peter. All right. Look who it is, Paul. Oh, Keith. He's a, he's a Keith's a good guy. We enjoy uh, having him on the show. Hey, Paul. Hey, Jason. Perfectionist. All right. Uh, what's your outline for a fertilization and weed control program in Southeast Georgia? What kind of grass you have, Elvin? That that always helps. Uh, but you're gonna want to get your pre-emergent out. You know, if you got Bermuda zoysia, put that out early in the year, uh, round one and two. Uh, you start fertilizing southeast Georgia. You probably start fertilizing in in April, and um, you know, and put your fall pre-emergent out probably October. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know if you're dealing with centipede down there, or if, or if you've got Bermuda zoysia, but um, that would be helpful. I do. We do sell stuff on LawnCareLife.com. The shameless plug here, and you can get programs and things like that. A bunch of a lot of information available there. All right, what about Celsius for Dallas grass. Yeah, uh, about 25 applications at triple the rate and you'll probably kill it, you know, but um, in all serious, it, it is on the label. Uh, if you put Celsius and Certainty or Celsius and Revolver, um, you might improve your chances. Uh, your best chance of getting it would be with some fall applications. Uh, but, you know, in the summertime, I mean, yeah, it'll turn it color. It might slow it down a little bit, but uh, very difficult to control Dallas grass. Um, but it is on the label for Celsius. Uh, when a new client asks me to mow a yard this Friday, do you call them Thursday to make sure that you can go mowing or just go on Friday? Uh, you know, if you've got it set up where you can do a bunch of texting and, and some system where you, you can streamline that, then go ahead. But I think most people, if it's just kind of an understanding that, hey, I'm coming every Friday. I, I'm not going to call them unless it's raining or something or I can't come. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, Arno, if it's possible, I don't know what you use for your CRM, but if you can get their card on file, uh, that would be awesome. And and then when you talk about their payment, you can just let them know, hey, we're going to come on Fridays and we're going to charge your card upon completion. Or you may even want to do a prepay system where they prepay, you know, up uh, they pay you, let's say, $300 at the beginning of the month or whatever their rate is. And then they've already paid for the month. And then you just faithfully show up on Friday. So I would not uh, text or call them on Thursday because then they're going to expect that. And you do not want to waste your time doing that. So if you can, uh, make sure you get their card on file using a CRM and charge it the day of the service or before the service, never after, you know, you don't want to be sending an invoice and be chasing money. Uh, that way the ball's in your court and then you just show up as you know, on Fridays and I've gotten away from, uh, even giving them a day I, because I don't like that. It rains, stuff happens. And, uh, well, you, you where were you, you know, Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. So I just tell them, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just too difficult to give you a day. And I know a lot of people like the Thursday, Friday thing. So it looks crispy for the weekend, but uh, you're a business owner. You can't be letting everyone drag you around their life. You, you need to yeah. have, you need to have boundaries, friend. And uh, that's a great tip. I, I, yeah. My main number one rule is you, you keep control of the business. Don't give it away to the customer. Yeah. So yeah, uh, don't, says, do not call or text. Uh, just show yeah. up on Friday. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the same guy that asked the question about growth regulator on a weedy hill. Uh, I, I don't know that that's the answer, but uh, you you could try. I just not. I don't think I've ever tried it in that situation. Have any tips on how to find employees? You got anything on that, real quick, Paul? 
a lot of a lot of folks that are good people are are other friends with good folks. So if you if, you know if you find a good one, you know see if they have any friends or stuff or something like that. And uh, when you yeah when you do find somebody who's good, you know you, you definitely got to take care of them because. Costco pays more than most lawn care companies and they can go work inside in the air conditioning. So how are you going to, mm-hmm. how are you going to recruit somebody to work out in the 90 degree Atlanta heat if you're not paying them well and taking care of them? So it's very, very difficult to find employees in this industry. Um, so Jason, do you have yep. any tips? Well, you got to keep your business real profitable so that you can afford to pay them decent. You know, if your business is struggling, you're going to have a hard time um, paying anybody. How much should I make this year if a company has three employees, four including me? Last year I made ninety five thousand, sixty eight thousand. Now I don't, I don't know how it's possible that you pay three employees and you, and your gross was ninety five and you're sixty eight thousand net. Um, you're not anyway. I, and eight thousand cat. It's hard to know Emmanuel without knowing more, uh, more information there. But you know, I, I would just say the general answer is let, let's keep growing year over year. So if you can continue to become more profitable, continue to improve your route density, continue to go up on your prices, continue to weed out bad customers and just improve year over year without throwing a number on top of it. Yeah. And, and Emmanuel, I'm going to throw out a name to you. A guy's name's John Payjack. You can find him on Facebook, John Payjack. He's who I personally use as about a four hour consultation. And what we did is we went through my previous year's um, uh, checking account statements and all my finances, and then find out what is my break even point, uh, what I, what I have to be making per hour to just pay all of my expenses. And then if I want to pay myself a salary, let's say I want to make $60,000 a year that the business is paying me, then we have a new number of what we got to be earning per man hour. And you need to know your numbers of, of what your business needs to be making per uh, man hour to be, you know, hitting the goals that you want. But the guy's name is John Payjack. He'll do a three or four hour consultation with you and give you the exact uh, numbers of your break even point and go over your overhead cost recovery and all of that. So you can't really answer that in 30 seconds on YouTube. But if you want to reach out to my friend, John Payjack, um, he can give you some financial coaching and really help you dial that dial it that in since you're around 100,000. Now it's it's time to really uh, make sure you're you got your eyes dotted and teeth crossed. Yeah, John was one of the early contributors on my channel. He's a gravel back mechanic uh, a yeah. long time ago. I mean, he's been, I mean, I'm probably, I'm, I'm talking about like eight years ago. He was coming and then I met him one time at GIE. He's like, hey, I'm the gravel back mechanic. I said, oh, man. Uh, yeah. John French, he's been to our uh, Lawn Care Life conference and I had been, he's from uh, Bloomington, Indiana, up there with the Hoosiers. Emmanuel says, what are your thoughts on Mike Andes? I don't know Mike personally, um, but I don't certainly don't have anything negative to say about him. Uh, have you ever met Mike Andes, Paul? Next question. All right. Late pray and work from Marcus. Uh, Dustin, when he still got that YouTube sign in front of the O. Uh, thanks, brothers. We'll pray for sure. I have the utmost respect for you guys. Appreciate it, Dustin. Hope, I hope things go well with you. Do y'all have any tips for finding employees? We gave those um, a while ago. What up from the line, Commander? We're going to, when I get to this list, I'm going to fly through these ball and we're cutting it off when we get to the end. No more questions, guys. We're going to try to answer the questions uh, that we have here. Which Bermuda seed is best for a home lawn that's going to be mowed with a rotary mower? mower? I was looking at Yukon Arden 15. Yeah, I think that Arden 15 is one of the new ones that Pennington came out with. I know there's the Princess 77 is another one. So it should give you some, um, you know, information about those, uh, which ones can be. I would think they all could be mowed at, at that low inch and a half to two inches so um i would just see which were probably the arden 15 if that's the latest one I'm, i would imagine that's the one they're proudest of and um you know think is is the best uh i like paper click yeah they can work you're good <laughs> all right you're still alive we lost jason i'm back um so this is how behind we were on the comments oh wow uh, yeah, we're we're getting done though. Struggling with estimate for prep and laying fifteen hundred square foot of St. Augustine flat front yard only help in South Florida. Save our side. Come on, Jason. I I mean, you know, like I said, I know a lot of my landscapers they charge like six hundred dollars uh per pallet, but if you've got some prep work involved, then uh you, you're gonna want to figure out how much time you got with the prep work. Yeah, and I, was, I like to I want to go back to that one real quick. I I, yeah, I go ahead. Like, I charge a minimum of $950 grading fee. So I tell the customer, we're going to come two days, one day to grade. You have 1,500 square feet. That's a lot of area to grade, to, to haul away whatever debris, make sure all the irrigation's working. That's $950 right there. And then on top of that, they're 
uh, three pallets of sod and all of that. So, so I've, I make a lot of money on sod by uh, charging them two prices, basically a grading fee. And then um, you're, you're baking up the, not just what you're paying for the material, but you're baking onto that and your labor and all that. So uh, I, I found sod to be one of my most profitable services, but I also charge 950 minimum for grading. Yeah, but is that what per pallet? Is, is it six hundred? Is that kind of in the ballpark of what people that's, are getting? That's normal. That's normal in Atlanta, but but a lot of these guys they don't know what they're doing, and so that's just everybody does six hundred because that's what that what what everybody does, but they don't I understand their numbers. So, um, if you got, I don't know if you're in Atlanta, but Atlanta turf grass, uh, Dwight and uh, the guys over there do a good job. They can help you understand the money behind it. But charge yeah, charge for your grading day. Paul, if you if you gotta go, just let me know because no, I'm 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 good, Jason. All right, we're gonna keep we're gonna fly through these. Congrats on a new per pressure washer, uh, Paul. Thank they you. saw your Echo pressure washer. What weed control and fertilization program do you recommend for South East Georgia, Elvin? I don't know if, if you're the ones that asked earlier. I, I have programs available at uh, blindcarelife.com, and uh, depend on the grass types there. But it's it's a package. We say it's like a fifty nine dollar package or forty seven dollar package. They come with programs and uh, Alabama Wi Fi. Hey man, we got yeah. Well, you're about right. Yeah, our Wi Fi. It, I think it was my computer this time. I can't even blame it on the internet. Paul, what's your favorite lawnmower? I like real mowers. So I've only used True Cut. I, I've been seeing these outlet mowers all over the internet. Um, I have never used that yet, but a uh, 27 inch True Cut real mower with a sharp blade on a zoysia grass, that is my favorite right there. All right, Paul, you had the goat on YouTube. It was it so uh, geek to freak, wasn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I was. I got to go to his house. Okay. Shout out to Naylor Taliaferro. Um, so Greg made a lot of money on YouTube. And he's now like the president of his HOA, he lives in a really fancy neighborhood and uh, he's doing well for himself. And Naylor actually, I told him I wanted to interview him on my podcast and Naylor's like, let me see what I can do. I'm thinking like on the phone, you know what I mean? And anyway, Naylor got me an appointment at Greg Chisholm's house, mansion, whatever you want to call this place. And uh, yeah, we got to shoot some videos while I was out there and just hang out with him. And uh, he is, uh, he, he was the original guy on YouTube, you know, cutting that grass, making that cash, making these fun videos. So uh, he, I'm, I'm honored to, you know, get to have him, uh, on my YouTube channel. That's really cool. That's awesome. Uh, KB says you ever had any problems with prodiamine slowing down the spread of Bermuda? I wanted my spread. What I've done in my yard, um, I wanted to spread, but I didn't want my yard to be filled up with crabgrass because that could prevent the spreading. So I just did the prodiamine round one, like kind of early. I mean, put out like early January or something. And again, I don't know where you live. And then I, I didn't use it in round two. Um, because in that, my thought was by the summer when that Bermuda really starts spreading, uh, the prodiamine would kind of have worn off by then. And, and that's what happened. I, I, I prevented the crabgrass and um, I didn't have any issues with it not taking root when it started spreading in the summertime. Best, uh, what's the best riding mower? Well, it's going to probably depend on someone. There's a lot of good brands out there, but it's going to depend on, um, you know, what, what application? I mean, do you do you if you're doing big properties, little properties, things like that. You know, I like uh, Toro, Xmark, Hustler, Gravely, Skag. They're all there's a lot of good brands. Um, I wouldn't be ashamed to ride any of those that I got a good deal on. Toro, Xmark. <laughs> there you go. Paul, this uh, made it more simple. Um, all right, man, Peter, <laughs> go away, man. Come on. Oh, this yeah. is like it. No, he he's he's that's about the fifth comment. He's just beating a dead horse on here, and it's just you know I I, I got to learn this software a little bit. Let me see. Oh, here you go. Block user. I found it. There we go. Block the user. Uh, thank you, Peter, because you helped me figure out my buttons on this software. Look who showed up. Oh, Arizona lawn care goes laying beds of river rock and succulents. That's that sounds about right. There he is. is. There he goes. Hey, he's that's a regular. Cool. He comes on here and just says. Tells me, hey, he's a very what, what's up? What's up, Trooper Gordy? Yeah, remember y'all got all over me because I asked him if he was a cop, and y'all just flipped out, you know, because because I, I didn't he's differentiate. A, he's a state, state state trooper, Jason. I believe me, I know now. Uh, I, I actually uh, called him Officer Gordy after I made fun of you. I got some humble pie because we're out on the balcony. I called him Officer Gordy. He is very gracious with me because. 
he was just enjoying the beautiful weather in the pool. But yeah, Trooper Gordy. Yeah. All right. Um, Husky Farm 525 is excellent. LSX. That's the exact one I got. I do agree. Ever use any plant growth regulator on trees and shrubs? I have it, but I want to. Uh, and, you know, you think about if you had like an Iliagnus or a holly bush or one of these things that just needs trimmed all the time, uh, I definitely want to get some of that and try it out. Uh, my string trimmer broke down today. I don't have a backup, so I was able to wasn't able to finish. So I offered a refund, but they declined. So what should I do? I'd get your trimmer and, and go back and finish the job, and, and thank them for being such a gracious customer. Sounds like you got a good customer that's trying to support your business. So don't yeah, don't you let can, them down. If you can afford a trimmer, go get one in the morning and finish that up before noon tomorrow. If you can't afford one, go rent one at the Home Depot for like twenty five bucks. And I get that finished for sure. I think that'll make, mean a lot to them that you came back and finished the job. Hey, guys, I decided uh, I will sod instead of seeding. They sell uh, uh, TIF 419. Any suggestions on getting it to root? Do you have to till the ground? Any suggestions? Well, if you till the ground, that would be better. Or if you or if you had some little bit of topsoil. Um, but, again, wait till it's hot and like 85 degrees and, and keep it watered until it germinates and, and get it going. And, and like I said, I explained the difference on zoysia and Bermuda. You don't have to necessarily get it all to grow. If you get some of it to grow, it'll definitely start spreading. Um, but yeah, wait till the weather gets hot and don't spray pre-emergent before you put your saw, uh, seed out. You got to make it uh, challenging on yourself. Hey, Jason, how do you repair Bermuda bear spot? Uh, was damaged by trampling. You can just, I mean, I bet you if it's a trampoline, a 12 foot trampoline or 10 foot trampoline, it'll fill in in one summer, to be honest with you. But if you want to speed it up, I mean, you could just buy a little bit of solder. I got this that thing called a pro plugger where you pull a plug out of the ground. You could put a few plugs in there and space it out if you want to speed it up. Uh, but you'll be amazed. I, I've, I've filled in something way bigger than a trampoline spot in one summer, just fertilizing and letting it grow. All right, if you're all in love with this live stream with Jason Paul, make sure you hit the thumbs up button for support, man. That's you can tell he understands the social media game. Thanks yeah, a thanks, lot for that. Thanks, Super Gordy. Oh, here's one. Somebody was asking about a uh, battery powered equipment. The Greenworks 60V has been working for me. Do you add to Justine's question? Can you grow grass under a trampoline? If so, which grass? I'm in South Texas. <laughs> under the trampoline is gonna be uh, tough, about the most shade tolerant grass in the south that I know of, of warm season grass is, is uh, you know, you got like emerald zoysia and I've got the, uh, not Zeon zoysia, which one I got? Um, I forget. Uh, anyway, emerald zoysia is, is one of the most shade tolerant. Um, I can't remember the one I got at my house. I, I Anyway, it, it's supposedly a good, be good by with three or four hours, but under trampoline is just not a great spot. Huh? You got Zeon zoysia? Not Zeon. My customer's got Zeon. It looks awesome. Mine looks awesome too. I just I can't remember. I, I, uh, oh, what up, Zorro? Mitchell? Zorro. Zorro. That's the one I got, Paul. And it is supposedly the number one rated tur uh, zoysia by the National Turf Grass Evaluation Program. <laughs> That's what they advertise. Is Memphis too hot for turf type tall fescue line? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so, but I but I, I don't know. I don't go to. Uh, Memphis, but I would, I would think you're probably what they call the transition zone. So not a little bit too, you know, not ideal for it, but would probably survive. Uh, you got to water it in the summer, I'm sure. All right, uh, at line commander, what up, brother? All right, uh, rigid 18 volt tools, a lifetime guarantee. There you go. Commercial business are using electric equipment. Yeah, they are. I think there's a. Uh, it's getting more and more popular. Appreciate the advice. I learned a lot from this channel. Thank you for that. Hey, Jason, can I use Negate for dandelions? I can't remember if Negate, what's if what's on the label for that or not. I know it's good for grassy weeds. I do. I, I can't remember. Um, I just say check the label on that. Uh, St. Augustine, Zoysia, and Bermuda. Okay, uh, you're asking for a program for, for grasses, I think, down in southeast Georgia. So, yeah. Um, there's some pro I can't I don't I'm sorry I don't have time to go over that now but there are programs available if you'll ask me if you come back next Monday and ask me earlier in the show we can give more time to answer that ever heard of King Ranch blue stem grass grassy wheat here in Texas any treatment options you know besides glyph I haven't heard of that one but you know to me if, if tribute total won't kill it or, or you know certainly in Celsius uh, then I, I don't know you might be in in trouble. Yes, till the soil and level it smooth. Make sure you can water it daily. This is on planting the, the seed, I believe. 
Uh, I'm blowing through these. We're going to make it to the end, Paul. Hey, Jason, thanks for all your hard work. Paul's a great guest. Your thoughts on Melorganite. Melorganite's great. I've, I've, I've used it. It's, it's very safe, you know, a low nitrogen. It's not going to burn the grass. You can put it out a bunch of different times. Uh, very popular. Thanks to our friend Alan Hayne, the lawn care nut. I just got the Echo Speed Feed 400. <laughs> it feels a little cheap, but uh, most part, they're really nice. I think those things are great. I prefer the smaller one versus the big one. The big one holds more line, but the small one spins faster. And I like stuff to spin fast. Jason, when building a turf care customer base, what are your thoughts on matching or slightly beating your current cost per app with whoever they're using? Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't want to compete on price. Bad idea. You want to uh, be the most professional. And most time, I don't think people are going to choose you because you're a dollar more or a dollar less. They're going to choose you because they think you're the guy for this job. Premium you got any thoughts pricing. on that, Paul? Premium, yeah, premium pricing. Pre premium pricing. You, you, you can have less customers if you charge more. You're doing less work and the, the perception of your business Charge more, man. Don't, don't be cutting a penny here, a dollar there. No, no thanks, Justin. Premium and, pricing, bro. And Raise I think sometimes, price. Paul, you probably agree that some people, if you're too low, they they won't hire you because they they uh, it, it's uh, for as many people as gonna say, oh yeah, I'll use him because he's cheap. You're probably offending as just as many who say I'm not hiring him because he's cheap. You yeah. know, so it yeah. just and you don't well, you don't want that customer that wants to go at the lowest price. Yeah, you, you don't want them. So so don't don't even think about it. All right. Uh, the best head for a string trimmer, in my opinion, the uh, Mitchell. I'm not sure what that is. What is the 108? So anyway, but that's what Mitchell uh, says is is the best. How about the Speed Feed 450? I, I yeah, I don't know. I get confused all the numbers, and everything. I like the small one, but the big one is is great. It's you just need a more powerful trimmer because that the small one, um, you know, sometimes you got to put it behind a air conditioners they fit in a little bit tighter spaces i like that because i take my guards off you know i don't like the guards being in the way uh thank you guys no problem thank mulch you side that, discharge. Was, that was a joke jason he huh? said thank you very mulch instead of mulch. oh i think man, was a joke. I'm, I'm going so fast i missed the l mulch or side discharge uh i i kind of like those shoot block things where you can do either one you know the true mulch kit is fine if you're mowing very often you know but if you're you know if you let the grass get tall and you got the sure enough mulch kit on there you may have some some issues there uh so i like the ability to to raise that thing up and let it fly if i'm out in the open field or close it um to mulch so uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't just want to go straight side discharge probably if I'm mowing out there on people's lawns because, you, you know, you got clippings everywhere. So I would want at least a mulch kit or like I said, I like the little shoot block uh, deal on the side that I can raise or lower. Have you ever tried three way for your spray weed killer? Yes, we use three way products. Um, and just subscribe quick. My neighbors have a horrible dandelion problem. It's spreading my lawn. What can I do to save my lawn? Just find whatever kind of grass you got. You might you just put 2,4-D or something out there and knock out the dandelions. It's no problem at all. Uh, hey, what do you think about these trucks? You were considering buying one Mitsubishi Fuso F-160 with a landscape bed. Put it in your fleet of lawn care. What do you think? You like the flatbed trucks, Paul, the cab overs? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. All right. I hear one of those big, great blue herons. What's your best weed killer? Uh, great question, Dalton, but it depends on the weed. Okay, so um, <laughs> the best one, like I, for me, out spot treating and stuff, I'm using Change Up Celsius a lot. I like Blindside, but those are not price I'm going to blanket the yard with. They're too expensive uh, for killing nut sedge and things like Not killing, but controlling it. I'm using Pro Sedge, Certainty, things like that. Um, all right. I don't know about all that. Uh, I've never used a 450. Is that what you use? That's one of the speed feed heads. What's your target price for planting small to medium sized shrubs? Cost of shrub plus how much labor? You have any thoughts on that, Paul? What do you like when you're installing shrubs, doing these installations and stuff? Do you have a set price per shrub or how does it work? It's just based on time. And are you digging it with a shovel or you, you have like a Toro Dingo with the auger bit that you're just, you know, drilling the holes like that? Uh, so it, it, it just depends what I, what I would do is, um, I go to a nursery here, uh, in Duluth, Georgia called, uh, Woody's where Martin's the general manager. And, uh, I, you know, when I go there, I say, Hey, Martin, what are the other companies charging and how, how, you know, I just start asking questions cause he'll tell me, you know, this company does it this way. That company does it this way. That company does it this way. If you, if you talk to the, if you get a good relationship with the, the, the main guy at the nursery, 
and, uh, you know, bring them lunch, bring them Starbucks, you know, do things to, to make them want to talk to you. Um, you can learn what the competition and, and the ways that they're uh, charging it. So um, there's there's a lot of ways to do it, but make sure you're marking up your plants and you're charging for your labor on top of that for sure. But right. don't, how do don't you, how do you, the how do you avoid leaving tire marks on the driveway and sidewalks? Um, you you got to be careful. You don't go out there and, uh, but yeah, don't get out there when it's early in the morning. You not only leave a tire mark, you smear the tire in the grass and leave a big grass stain and something. So, you know, you may want to actually make a perimeter pass around the property uh, and then and then go back and forth so that you don't actually have to get on the driveway if that's been a problem. Is X Mark 30 worth it? I know some people like the 30, some people like the 21. There's pros and cons. The 30 is obviously bigger and faster, um, but heavier. So um, they're, they're great mowers, leave a great cut. It just depends on your application, whether you're going to be needing the 21 or the 30. All right, this guy gave us two bucks. Thank you. And he does not like Ryobi. Zorro Zoysia, James reminded me. We appreciate that. Sit down on the John Deere Zero Term versus a standard, which is better in more cases than other models. Uh, I, you know, I, I like the standards and the, and the if, you, if you're trying to, the standards, you know, what's good about them, you can hop on and off real quick. They're more compact on a trailer. Uh, sit down. You know, some people just prefer to sit. Some people, some I've heard people say it both ways. Like sitting is more comfortable, and some people say standing is more comfortable. Um, I I like both. So I I can't really um, say, but you know, the, there is some advantages to the standard. They they're just compact and fit in tight spaces. Uh, thanks for the great stream. Appreciate you being a part. Good electric backpack sprayer. I've got a. Um, a Milwaukee one that's great. Uh, I've heard good things about a few of the other brands, but I can't, their name slips me at the moment. But definitely the battery ones are great. It's ballardproducts.com. There you go. I only run steel, which is what Troy says. Love your videos. I'm in East Tennessee. Give you best advice on a 10 or 14 day bi weekly schedule, how you manage it with a weekly thrown in. I'd try to get more weeklies and less 10 to 14 day bi weekly. So, and I'd pay, I, 10 day schedules are just aggravating to me because you got. You know, I mean, I, I just go weekly or biweekly, and I and I try to get as many weeklies as possible, and eventually get rid of the biweekly. So uh, it's like Paul said, you know, less customers, and you make more money with with less fewer customers. Uh, my yard takes drainage that comes down from the neighbor, and we have three drains. There's a lot of water running over it and rain, hurting my Bermuda grass. Uh, sometimes you have a situation like that, and the Bermuda's not holding good on a hill. You have erosion problems. You might consider zoysia. It's, it holds better on a hill. It grows thicker, and it may solve your problem. Um, or you figure out some kind of drainage system to keep it from washing so bad. I bought the DeWalt pole trimmer around 240 bucks. Cuts uh, good. He likes the DeWalt trimmer. What's the best thing? On, to kill weeds, vinegar and water mix. Um, yeah, vinegar and stable salt and water. It will kill weeds, but don't spray it in your yard. You mess, you know, salt's not great for your yard. Northwest Alabama applied a pre-emergent in mid-February. We'll apply in September. What should I apply? Uh, should I apply summer treatment too? You can spot treat weeds, get like Celsius or something, and just spot treat your weeds and then fertilize. Um, I got a BR600. How long it lasts? Man, who knows? But they're good blowers. They've been around a long time. What's the best manual reel mower? I like to try on St. Austin. Paul, you know anything about manual reel mowers? I, I, I the neighbor guy's got one. It looks looks like a lot of work. So I, I don't know. I, I I've personally used not I you know with the engine on it. The True Cut. Those are great mowers. And uh, the Allet mowers I've not used yet, but I've seen those on um on the internet, but I, I would get a, you know, I would, I would get a R E E L real mower. I'd get a real, you know, engine on it. I, I want to be out yeah. there pushing it uh, like yeah. they did back in the 1940s. Hey guys, if, uh, if you don't mind, no more questions, we're going to try to finish up these last few. And, and so I'm cutting it off here, cut, blow and edge go the cheapest. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know about all that. That's not a good strategy. Premium price right thing, now. No. Gotta get back to work. Thanks all right. Mitchell. Go get it. Go get it, Mitch. Uh, uh, do you guys mow on the weekend and holidays, 4th of July? I, I tell you what, I've been out there spraying on January the 1st before, New Year's Day. If it's warm in January, I'm thinking I'm spraying because I'd rather spray on, on – if it's 50 degrees on January the 1st, I'd rather spray on that day uh, than, you know, Alabama's not playing one of those – loser new year's day bowl game they're playing waiting playing for after the, that yes sir yeah they're waiting for the real games you know i don't want to see yes, all get beat by central florida or something like that uh <laughs> just 
Hey, you just started my business a couple of days ago. I'm very bad at trimming. Do you think I'll get better with time? Uh, yeah, you, you definitely get better with time and faster. Um, but I mean, you got it. Just, it just takes practice, like anything. Learn how to play a musical instrument. How much you charge for an hour of mowing, Paul? What do you? What it's going to depend on your market. It, but any advice yeah, on an hourly if, rate? If Fifty-five to sixty dollars is the Atlanta market right now, bare, bare minimum. Some guys, you know, that are skilled charge more than that, but. Uh, if, if you're anything less than $55 per man hour, you're, you're below market. Yeah. Uh, best, cheapest truck to start with. Uh, just get you, you know, some little F-150 or something, you know, or a, you don't want to get just a four cylinder out there, barely a pull a trailer. So um, absolute best shade tolerant, Zoysia for North. What's that one? Zorro. Zorro Zoysia. Is is the one emerald would be a, a, a close second, I think. They look about identical. You just hit eight thousand subs. Appreciate that, and glad to, I'm, I'm going for a hundred. I got to get to a hundred, Paul. I'm, I'm tired yeah, of being get, in. You know, get, get you a silver play. Is that what they give you? Okay. Yeah, you get a silver one, and then when I was at Greg Chisholm's, he had these gold ones. He had three gold ones. He had three different channels he built that had a million subscribers. That's yeah, crazy. Three. Three gold play buttons, and they're sitting in his closet uh, next to his, you know, the, little wow. car toys things. Oh, uh, here's some good information. X Mark 30s are faster than 21s, but they're more maintenance, and they don't mulch wet grass well. It will clump a lot. I run X Mark 30s since they first come out. Thank you for that. Uh, how far can Bermuda travel to fill in gaps in one summer? Oh, man, a long way, especially if you put some plugs out there like I'm talking about. But I, when I say a long way, I'm talking I mean, go to my channel, watch what I did with my yard. I put two pallets of sod on two acres and uh, and you ought to see how little Bermuda I got right now in my backyard. I think I'm going to fill up two acres with next to, you know, little grass. But if you get big bear spot, if like I got like a 10 foot bear spot, I'll use that pro plugger and I'll stick a few plugs in there to speed up the process. But your best months are, uh, you know, June, July, August, September. It'll really spread. Put the fertilizer to it and, and, and keep it water. Best time to sod St. Augustine. I can go ahead and do it now before it gets too hot. Uh, this is the last comment. You're correct, John. I appreciate you guys cutting it off. It's been a great discussion, Paul. I'm sorry I kept you late, man. I didn't. I was trying. There's more questions than we've ever had, I'll be honest with you. They were, cool. they were, they were excited to see you on here. Awesome. Thank you uh, for having me on, Jason. All right, Paul, how do people find you if they, if they made it this far and they want to follow, follow Paul, Paul and where they want to get your book, which I do recommend Paul's book on Amazon. You buy it. You buy the – I did the Audible version. I like – and Paul reads it. I like when the author reads it, but you can also get the, the paperback. Okay, yeah, the book is Cut That Grass and Make That Cash. It's four hours and two minutes, and you can get it for free at greenindustrypodcast.com. Uh, by going there, you'll get an Audible subscription for 30 days, and uh, they'll actually give it to you for free. If you already have the Audible subscription, then you just use your credit. So that's pretty cool. If you want the paperback, you got to buy that. I think it's like 14 15 I don't know. It's, it's less than 20 bucks. It's over there on Amazon. And uh, uh, the podcast is the Green Industry Podcast. We have shows Monday through Friday that we talk uh, about lawn care and landscaping business tips. And then we have a Sunday service, a bonus program on Sundays. So six episodes a week there. And wait, there's more. We just started <laughs> a YouTube channel. And well, actually, I started in like 2012 and 13 making sports videos. And uh, they're actually when Alabama uh, beat Georgia, uh, we f filmed our reaction. What's that wide receiver you got, Devontae Smith? Yeah, uh, he was a true freshman back then. Two, I hit him second, twenty six, and now what happened to him? Wins the Heisman Trophy. I mean, yeah, it's just, so I, just I, I made like a viral video for that game, and then uh, like another. Uh, my brother made this half court shot. It has eight hundred thousand views, and so I have like four thousand subscribers on this YouTube channel. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start posting on this thing, but like daily or as close to daily as I can. But I'll put YouTube content on. Pardon me. I'm, I'm tired, Jason. I'm going to put landscaping and lawn care and pressure washing content on my YouTube channel. So I just started that last week. So it'd mean a lot to me, guys, if you would subscribe to me. It's Paul Jamison Landscaping on YouTube. And uh, I'm actually starting a new landscaping business here shortly. And I'm going to be documenting that whole journey Uh you know, try to build a business and then sell it and just document the whole thing uh, from scratch. So it's going to be a lot of fun to, to see, you know, how big we can build or, you know, how, how much we can sell this thing for one day and whatever. It, it's going to be a lot of fun just documenting the process.
Yeah, I think that's Hard awesome, nothing. Paul. Yeah. All right. Always enjoy visiting with you. You bring a lot of energy and a lot of knowledge. And so I really appreciate you being on. And on it's 930 here, 1030 your time, Paul. You yeah, and great. I'm in the studio. I got to go home. And uh, when I get my YouTube, you know, up and rolling, I'll, I'll uh, see if we'll get you on my show, Jason. We'll do the yeah. same thing. We'll love it. Talk to you later. Thanks, you guys, for participating. We'll plan to be back next Monday night. Talk to you later. Bye. See you guys.